Where are you leading us? I'm leading you to the future forest. <laughs> are you intrigued? <laughs> Doesn't look like much right now. I was able to get out here just about a couple days ago, right before it got really windy and snowy, and I string trimmed this. It was quite an ordeal. We need a proper tractor to actually come in here. But um, this was kind of a no man's land area, and we were gonna concentrate on planting trees in the more like denser forest that's on the opposite end of this land. But this is also enclosed in a deer exclusion fence. So it gives us an opportunity to plant trees here. And this was kind of a meadow area. It was just like this really high forage grass that's pretty thick. And this didn't get any seeds in and wasn't really uh, tilled or disked or anything along those lines when we were cleaning out the meadow back in the day. So we decided that we would take a lesson and a learning from Mount Cuba Center and see what they were doing with replanting a forest and managing the grass there. So we see this as going to be quite a lovely forest to, to walk through. This we picked up at Coldwater Pond Nursery. This is Saunders favorite tree. It took us a while to figure out where to plant this, but I had recommended planting it here because it will get 70 feet tall. It's quite large. You could see that it's a Pinus strobus. It's a white pine but this is a cultivar called the White Mountain because it has these like white colorations on the needles if you look like really closely. We did put a fence around it just in the event that a deer does break through the fence. Um, at least this one is, you know, protected so it doesn't get, it's like growing tips nibbled off. And everywhere you see a yellow flag is another tree and these are bare root trees that we picked up from the county, I guess the cooperative extension. And they're primarily um, oaks. So we have swamp white oaks, white oaks, chinkapin oaks. That's a white spruce that you see here. So we have a number of those. And we also have a red oak, chinkapin oak, swamp white oak, white oak. And then we went out and we got uh, hickories. So we have quite a bit of shagbark hickories here, but I haven't really seen any other hickory on this land, but the shagbarks do extremely well. So I wanted to try to see if I could find more hickories because there's mocker nuts, there's pig nuts, there's shellbark hickories, there's pecans. <laughs> so we did go and plant some mocker nut and pecans in the nut grove area that we have that's hanging off like the interstitial area but we also planted some shellbark and 
uh, pecans over here as well. What was interesting about that is we had to drill about three feet down into the ground. It was too hard for me to dig that amount. So we borrowed our friend's auger on his Vimeer and Sander had the wonderful opportunity and the great fun of actually augering down about three feet. And that was pretty cool because we just realized how easy it is. And the thing with those hickories is that there's not many nurseries around here that will allow them to get that deep tap root. And so that's why it was so uh, like deep in order to be able to do that. So, cause a lot of the trees around here will just like spread out and that's good for anchoring. But what would be nice is if the tree naturally develops a deep tap root to let it grow a deep tap root and also to let it spread out. So it's anchored in the land a lot better. So if you recall, like when we did a tour with Mount Cuba Center, in order to get rid of a lot of the grass, uh, they would plant trees five to 10 feet away from one another. And the five foot area, you could see turned into a forest much, much better. Now for this one, we don't want the trees to be as close because we still want this to be walk walkable. We're not turning this into a very dense forest. We still want it to be walkable since it's right off of the berry and the orchard patch. And we want to be able to uh, develop paths through it. So I'm more inclined to actually just manage the grass area and allow these to grow up. And then come spring and fall next year, once these start to establish, we could start dotting in some other trees. So these are really tall trees. Most, I think most of these, I probably planted a couple service berries in here, which would be sub canopy trees. But most of these trees are gonna be quite tall. So like I said, oaks, hickories, spruces. And these, some of these plants are not ones that we see on the land, even though they're native here. And they are, and many of them are bioregional because we got these like bare roots that have been taken uh, directly from the, the, the county and the surrounding counties. So they're more primed and ready to be able to go into these grounds. So we see this whole area and you'll see some yellow flags dotted throughout here in an area that I did not get to cut down. So we'll have to do that in the spring unless we get some kind of warm season, I don't know. And then uh, it will kind of trickle through and feather out to the other areas. This is an example of one of the hickories that you could see here. It's that characteristic hickory leaf, pinnate. Uh, this might be a shell, no, oh, this is the pecan. I think I planted the shell bark a bit more towards the water. And the reason for that is, you know, shag barks, if you go into our forest here, you'll see a lot of shag barks around one another. They have like these colonies of shag barks. And it's one of the few trees in our forest right now that is doing exceptionally well. Unfortunately, the forests around here have gone through a lot of drama between the woolly adelgid on the hemlocks to the emerald ash borers. Um, you know, we had Dutch elm disease, all sorts of things that have affected this forest, unfortunately. And obviously forests for us around, it's not just our forest. But shell barks are often around riparian areas, wetter areas, and they don't necessarily form dense colonies. So I thought, you know what, let's try two of those around some of the wetter areas. This is kind of like the floodplain, if you will. This is a an area that is, if our pond ever, overflows, God forbid, it would come out into this area and then it just works its way down into the series of uh, ponds that we have. So we wanted to put the shell barks in areas where it definitely would get that moisture. So we'll give it a shot and then come spring and fall next year, we'll start dotting in some more trees. And you know, in hopefully a decade, we'll see some, a really nice, beautiful forest growing up here that we can enjoy and that other folks can enjoy after us. So that's it. If you're learning from and enjoying the videos that we produce here at Flock, consider liking, subscribing, hitting the notifications button, and even tipping. 
Your support and viewership does really make a difference. We're reinvesting 10% of our Google AdSense proceeds back into community projects, which is matched by our partners over at Espoma Organic. Thank you again for your support, and we'll see you in the next video.